Hey everybody, welcome back to Live Free and Tool On, and this is the Ryobi Weekly Update. Thanks for joining. So over the past two weeks, we've been bringing a lot of new information in terms of tools, savings deals. Well, this week, I think we have a little bit of a lull um, because we're getting ready for the big Black Friday sales next week. Um, but there was one deal that came up that I'm pretty excited about, and you all should be too. So right now, they're selling two 6 amp hour HP batteries for 139 that is roughly just about 50 percent off of what they usually retail for now these are the new batteries as you can see so they don't have the rubber over molding on the bottom in order to protect that but we're going to get back to that just a little bit later so that's the new deal uh, in terms of new tools i haven't seen too many new tools coming out i think they've really uh, put a surge on those tools in the last two weeks in order to build some excitement in order to really push things out uh, next week for Thanksgiving. But this week, the one thing that I really wanted to focus on is the Ryobi tool community. Specifically, when you go to Facebook, you look at the groups. Um, as I search through here, I'm really impressed with, with a lot of what people are doing. Specifically, there's a lot of professional jobs. So this week, I'm gonna focus on Ryobi tools or Ryobi tools in industry. And what I mean by that is professionals using them on the job. We're gonna go through a bunch of those, but we're not gonna lose sight of some of the other really cool tool modifications that are going on too. Before we get started, I'm gonna ask everyone a question. What are your thoughts on the Ryobi tool centers? You know, the old gray tool centers. You would have a chop saw that would store inside. You would have a bottom drawer that you would have a whole bunch of, you know, like three or four tools on the bottom. You rolled it around, you pulled it to job sites. You really had everything in a small package. So my question is, would you like to see that come back? And if it did come back, what are some of the modifications that you would want to do for it? What are some of the uh, kind of cooler things that you want to see involved? Now we do have the link system that just came out. The pricing's out there. People are starting to order those. But let's take a step back and let's look at these tool centers and maybe there's some modifications or some things people can do with the new link systems. Hint, hint. Um, you know, to really uh, change things and to build these tool centers once again now that we have this new stuff coming out. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, right now we're gonna head over to the Ryobi Rebels page and we're gonna take a look at Alan Orsak. He uses Ryobi tools every day professionally. Um, he's in construction, he does carpentry. As you can see here, he's building a pretty large deck. Um, but then also he's... <laughs> He builds uh, docks and things in water. He's a professional. He does a lot of really cool stuff. Now I want to give a huge shout out to Alan because he uses these tools every day. He puts them through the ringer. If you don't think that these can be used professionally, well, Alan's going to prove you wrong. So great job, Alan. I really love seeing this stuff. Uh, the work is top notch. Keep it up. I can't wait to see more projects that you're doing out there. So next we're going to head over to Ryobi Freaks and we're going to take a look at Drew Bennett. Now, when I found this post, I was set back a little bit because this is unusual type of uh, construction, if you will. So Drew builds custom pools, in-ground pools, above-ground pools, uh, custom hot tubs, in-deck hot tubs, and that's what caught my eye is the in-deck hot tub. He's cut it out, he's custom making it here and putting it in. Now, I talked to Drew at length um, over chat, and he really told me a lot about what he's doing. He's given me a lot of examples, and it's really impressive the craftsmanship that he's showing. Now, he uses Ryobi exclusively. If you want to talk about people being industrious, people being advantageous, the guy builds custom in-ground pools, he does all this custom carpentry using these tools professionally, and really, they're proving to you that they're not meant for just homeowners. You can use these to build a lot, and they're holding up. Okay, let's take a break. I have one more question for everyone. In Australia and Europe, whenever we look at their batteries, we always see the uh, four amp hour, I'm sorry, we always see a one hour, a 1.5, you see a two amp hour battery, but most of all, you see 5.0 batteries, and those are really, really prevalent, and they're very common over there. My question to everyone here is, in the United States, we do not have five amp hour batteries. We have the 1.5 amp, we have the two amp, we have the three amp, we have four amp, six amp, and nine amp hour batteries. These are for the one plus batteries. Why do we not have the five amp hour battery? That's a food for thought. Uh, 
right down in the description. Tell me what you think. What's your theory? Why doesn't the United States have a five point, uh, a five amp hour battery? We have them in Milwaukee. We have them in other tool brands. Why haven't we brought them over from here? All right, let's go over to the innovation side of things. We're going to go back to the Ryobi Freaks page, and we're going to check out Charles Heyman. Charles Heyman has been designing and making things on his 3D printer. Um, he's been piecing things together. He's pretty fluent in electronics. So if you take a look here, he's actually able to take two batteries, and he integrates them together. And it's a power adapter, and he brings two leads off of that, so you can wire them in series or parallel. Um, and then you can use them for whatever you really need them to. When you have an idea, he, he really puts pen to paper. He, he, he makes it happen. So he's just not a thinker. He actually makes it. And that's really that one step from thinking you're going to do something to doing something. That's actually a big step. I mean, that is a huge step to actually do it. So this is really impressive. I would encourage other people to learn more, do more. Talk to Charles. I'm sure that he would help you out. Um, post your projects too and really just, just give it a shot. Get educated um, or share uh, the knowledge that you have so you can educate other people too. That's why we're all here. Let's share the knowledge, right? Um, so good job, Charles. This is good stuff. I can't wait to see more of the stuff that you're doing. Okay, now we're going to go over to the Ryobi user, uh, Tool Users page 2.0. Um, Robert Modsley. He actually made a power adapter. He had an old NICAD battery. He took it apart. Um, he put an AC adapter into it, and now he can run his little 4-inch fan as long as he wants. He made it a hybrid tool, essentially, so he can either use the battery or he can use this adapter to run his fan anywhere, and he doesn't have to worry about uh, charging it if he doesn't have a charged battery. He just runs that, and he keeps it going without any issues. I thought this in particularly was a very cool idea. I like how it did it. I like the execution. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of options. You can pull the power adapter in or out. So he has a female and a male uh, there that it's not just always a cord attached. So uh, good job, Robert. I can't wait to see more stuff that you're doing. But more importantly, I think that this is inspiring other people to do more stuff. It seems approachable, this type of uh, project, kind of a nuts and bolts that you can you know, put together, order online, and just put together. You're not crafting or designing things. Um, and this actually gives me a good idea because there are a few tools out there that I think should be hybrid. And I'm going to talk to Robert, maybe get some ideas, and, and maybe bring something out to other people. But the best thing about this is let's have the conversation. Let's have people talk about it. And uh, maybe you have some really great ideas. Maybe you've done this already. If you have, hey, let me know about it. I would love to tell the world about what you're doing. I got to go to Michael Dean real quick, and he's TikToking it all day long. Now, his, uh, the drill where the, it slams around, hits the guy in the chin, he comes on. If it was a Ryobi, it would have taken his head right off. Well, I think we all agree if we're watching this video. But he came out with a new video this week where someone takes a Ryobi drill and they look on the inside of it, and on the inside it has a hex key. And what they're saying is that you can take a hex key and it goes right in there and then you can lock it in place with the chuck. So I immediately ran downstairs, I took a look, and sadly, no, that is not on these drills. That's just what holds the chuck on. So, uh, you know what, in the video it looked great, but dude, you got everybody running to their basements checking out these tools. Uh, I would encourage everyone to go support Mike, uh, go to the TikTok and, you know, watch his videos. They're short, they're funny, it's not going to take up a lot of your time. You know, get a giggle out of it. I said I was going to come back to the batteries, the 6.0 batteries. Here's why. I did a video not too long ago where I showed everyone that you can paint on the Plasti Dip onto the bottom of your batteries. That's going to keep them from sliding. It's going to have some impact. Not as much impact resistance, um, but it's going to stop it uh, from sliding off your table or wherever you're working. Well, Charles Heyman, he's actually designing boots that go on the bottom of the battery. So when you buy these batteries, you're going to be able to slip these boots on the bottom and they're nice, thick, like a, a softer rubber type. So it's flexible. It's going to stay around. Um, I thought that was a really good idea. He's prototyped them, as you can see in the picture. But as he gets these going, he is talking about, you know, making a few, maybe selling them. I can tell you, if you do that, I'll be a customer. I'll look you up. 
and I will buy some of these for the tools. I, I think it's a, a wonderful idea, and I think you're doing a great thing out there, so keep it up. I can't wait to see some of the other things that you're designing and coming up with. All right, everybody, so that's it for Ryobi Weekly. I really appreciate you tuning in and watching the videos. If you are interested in being featured on this channel, especially on this series, uh, message me. You'll see the link down below. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell because we're coming out with these things weekly. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye now.